yeah, okay. okay. Yes, I'm, I'm Stefano. I'm a postdoc at uh, Melbourne University in the lab of uh, Tony Papenfuss. Um, today, I will talk to you about a robust differential composition and variability analysis uh, for multi-sample single-cell omics. And uh, we have a preprint. Uh, if you look for this title uh, in Google, you'll, you'll find it. Okay, so um, we know that uh, in biology compositional analysis uh, are quite important. Uh, for example, we might want to understand if uh, the abundance of a T cell uh, subtype in a cancer tissue is depleted compared to healthy uh, samples. And um, with single cell technologies, uh, now we can have a quite direct observation of tissue composition. Uh, we can gather information about DNA, protein, and RNA. And, uh, well, we are familiar with this uh, 2D representation. We can cluster cells based on their similarity. Um, and uh, the compositional data itself is quite simple. We count the number of cells in each cluster for each sample. So in the x-axis, we have 10 samples here. You can, say that, uh, you can see that for some samples, we have collected a lot of cell types, so we have more information, and for, uh, for other, not so much. Uh, so if we factor out these um, uh, total cell counts, we can observe proportions, that's sum to one, and we can appreciate some heterogeneity, and we might uh, want to seek some patterns of differential abundance between two categories. So the, uh, the rationale why to develop uh, our method, that is called SCCOMP, is that um, I... Uh, I started to understand that this type of data has five main properties, that the uh, available method do not join model altogether, they compromise um, for some or others. And so we had said that uh, this data is observed as counts. Uh, this counts underlying proportion, which, uh, which is a latent variable, uh, that has, is weakly negatively correlated because it's compositional as to sum to one by definition. Uh, so the variability of proportion is specific for each cell type. This is something is emerging. Um, and uh, we have a association between uh, abundance and variability. This is something that in our study we described. Um, uh, we described. And uh, also we observed that data might include outliers and might be prevalent. And uh, that's, uh, that's why we developed these methods that model all these uh, properties uh, jointly. And so uh, I won't have time to go into the statistical model, but basically we use a sum constrained beta binomial distribution and is unique in the sense uh, that it can jointly model counts, compositionality, uh, group specific variability, and also allowing for missing data. So it's quite convenient if we want to remove outlier to uh, do our estimation. Uh, this is a busy schematics, but I'll guide you through briefly. Uh, this is present in our preprint. It's basically describing the core model here uh, in the center. Uh, we have some data of which, uh, which includes um, cell type identity. Uh, we provide with our method, we have a layer of outlier identification and uh, filtering, and then we have our estimates. And we can do uh, quite a few things with our model. For example, uh, well, we can do hypothesis testing, of course, on the differential abundance, uh, but also on the differential uh, variability. Uh, we also, as I mentioned, model uh, the relationship between abundance and variability, and we use a Bayesian model, so this is all jointly modeled, and this relationship is, also, is hierarchically modeled. So we can transfer information across cell types. And also, uh, we can inform this association, transferring knowledge from other reference data sets in case we have uh, a low uh, data uh, data set, and we can also perform other things uh, that um, you can read more in the preprint. Uh, so let's start with uh, this mean variability association. Uh, so the idea is that if we represent proportion in a, a linear dimension, so for example, we take logit proportion, one thing that we observe is that we have three cell types, for example, here for abundant cell types, such as T cell, we observe a relatively higher uh, variability compared to rarer cell types. And this is taken, is the same plot as before, taken from a, a real data set. Each point is a cell type, so we have roughly 30 cell types here. And these are the estimates, so we, we see the credible intervals there. 
If we plot uh, the logit mean and log variability, we see a quite striking linear association. And so we can use these for doing shrinkage of the estimates. So for example, for rare cell types, uh, where we don't have so much data, we can estimate more accurately the variability, knowing the mean and transferring information about uh, all set types. And one thing we have done in our study is to take 18 data sets across technologies. You can see single cell site of a microbiome. And we have modeled them initially being naive on this association. So this association were, was not in the model. Uh, and nonetheless, this association emerged uh, from pretty much all data sets. So it's quite ubiquitous also across technologies. Um, and we show in the preprint that uh, when we embed this association in the model, we get um, a shrinkage on the estimate as in, it was our goal. In our, uh, another aspect is outlier identification. Uh, so uh, we developed a model last year for doing uh, outlier identification for count distribution for RNA sequencing data, but this method is transferable to our distribution in this case. Uh, again, this is a representation of a real data set. We have proportion on the y-axis. Uh, we facet based on cell types, and each dot is a sample. So we have roughly 20 samples here. We are comparing categories. Well, this is very small, uh, but I will just point to you that uh, for example, in this cluster seven, we have a decrease in abundance of this uh, cell type, uh, except for some of the samples. And so our model, uh, our method takes the linear model and all the uncertainty and identify probabilistically uh, this outlier uh, that we can explore further and uh, might even be an uh, interesting sample. But we can decide to drop them from the estimates and so have a more robust uh, estimate. And um, we have um, done analysis according with the design of seven different studies and the bottom line that we identify outliers ubiquitous, ubiquitously across this uh, data set. Uh, this bar plot represents the number of outlier uh, data points we identified, in this case 20, some of which in red were present in cell type. They were eventually, once we exclude them, differentially abundant, uh, so they've could have caused false negative here. And this dot represent how many cell types this study had. So here we have a study with 50 roughly cell types uh, and one third of them roughly include one or more, more outliers. So the bottom line is that our outliers are present and uh, they should be not ignored, taken into account. Uh, another aspect of our method is that not only we can do hypothesis testing on differential abundance, uh, but also differential variability. Uh, so why this is important is because in biology, for example, an increased variability of a variable is often uh, index of loss of homeostasis. Uh, think about blood pressure. If young individual and older individual might have a similar average blood pressure, we have older individual with hypertense and hypotense. So uh, doing just a, a test on differential variability uh, can highlight this loss of homeostasis in this case of the circulation. And so you can imagine this uh, is important for cell, cellular biology and molecular biology as well. Um, and so I just show you, uh, this is a, again an analysis done on a data set. Uh, I guide you through these plots. Uh, so this is a simple linear model where we are comparing um, health individual with uh, COVID uh, affected in individuals. And so here the intercept and here is the effect. And so again, we are plotting logit mean and log variability. And this is the baseline as again, we can see this striking association here. Now, because mean and variability are associated, even also their effect will be associated. And so, uh, as you can see here, if we don't take into account this association, every time we called a differential abundant, we also call a differential variable. So we will, we will have learned nothing of the variability, basically. But we are, when we regress this baseline association here, uh, some variability effects start to show up that are independent this time on the effect of abundance. Uh, and so here I show you just three cases in which uh, for example, NK and CD4 naive, they decrease in abundance, but also increase in variability. Um, and this might be important because, let's say, we want to 
uh, develop an immune therapy that targets some of these cells. It's very important to know if our cohort uh, has a consistent, uh, consistent presence of these cells, or like in this case, some individuals might have a very abundant NK cell and some other not. Um, that's it. So uh, just to mention that uh, this um, method is called SCComp, is, is um, available on GitHub and by conductor, accepts um, all sorts of um, data structures, and it's pretty easy to use uh, such a, in a linear model fashion when you uh, declare your linear model for composition and variability. Um, I have to thank Victorian Cancer Agency and um, my laboratory and many of collaborators. And uh, the last opportunity that I will just mention uh, that I also invite you to the uh, tomorrow workshop of tidy transcriptomics uh, since we are here. Thanks a lot.